later. Do you remember Julie Boonstra? Yeah, she's the cancer patient from Michigan. She lost her health insurance under Obamacare because of Obamacare, she said. Harry Reid called her a liar. Now she's being attacked by the Detroit Free Press and the Washington Post. Congressman James Langford is joining me now. Um, he's with the Republican from Oklahoma. Congressman, welcome to the program. Thank you. Now, I can't imagine that attacking a cancer patient no. is, is good policy. No. And I don't know why on earth Democrats would do such a thing in an election year. Have you, have you any explanation? No, it, it, for them, especially in an election year, it, but at any other time, they're battling with this perception that there really aren't problems, everything's just fine. The problem is they're fighting against an avalanche. They're trying to identify one person, say, look, this one person may or may not I've told the truth. There are thousands of people that will rise up right behind her and say, but my story's correct. I'm a diabetic. I have MS. I've had to change my medications. All these different things are coming around behind. I used to have access to this hospital. Now I don't have access to my doctor in my hospital. So they're trying to say one person's caused all this. Millions of people are experiencing the problems. Now, Republicans in the House, you don't want to be the party that simply says, no, we're going to repeal Obamacare. Just get rid of it. You want, in fact, I believe that you, sir, you have a plan, an alternate plan, right. to replace Obamacare. Now, without going into great detail, I, it seems to me that it's all about competition within the, the insurance industry, individual control, right. individual choice, market forces at work, and not the top-down bureaucracy of Obamacare. Right. I, mean, I mean, I know you haven't got the details straightened out yet, right. but I may broadly right in where you're going with it. That's correct. There's two different tracks in this. One is to deal with all the states uh, that are going to still be in some kind of system like that that choose to be it. And the other one is a, a proposal that I have called the Health Care Compact that allows an individual state to say we want to opt out and control completely the health care decisions. Medicare, Medicaid, SCHIP, and all the Obamacare regulations. Already states manage their Medicaid. This would allow those health care authorities in those states to manage all decisions made on medicine and truly make it state driven. Uh, the way that you deal with federal government power is to do the same thing the Constitution did, diversify, get it back to the states. The states are competent to be able to handle this. This health care compact would allow states that want to, to be able to run their own health care, and for states that like their Obamacare, they could keep their Obamacare. Now, you, states that don't, don't. You can't change Obamacare between now and the November election. No. But what you plan is to go into that election with an alternative. That's correct. And, not and, exactly a rescue plan, it is an alternative. Flat correct. Out. And, it, and it is one of those things Republicans have pushed from the very beginning. There's this perception the president continues to play up here with politics say Republicans have no other ideas is absolutely not true what the president's trying to do is bait us into saying well, let's fight about your plan not fight against the reality on the ground which is Obamacare we're gonna we have plans we have about 120 different proposals that are sitting out there for different segments of this Eric Cantor well, and John Boehner pulling it all comprehensive together comprehensive plan you gotta That's pull great. it all together so voters can say it's either this or this that's what David Jolly did in Florida, isn't it? Right. He it had is. a, a, a specific set of proposals as alternatives to Obamacare, and he won. Correct. But it's not going to be one big, giant proposal. Americans really do not like a big, giant, comprehensive bill. They want to see slices of it. How would this work? How would this work? What Obamacare does is it does creates this giant Rube Goldberg machine that everything's all connected to each other. If any one part fails, all of it fails. Americans do not like that. They want to see what's a simple solution for those uninsured. What's the simple solution uh, for those that are cancer patients? What's the simple solution for this? There are simpler ways to do this without taking over all these different insurance companies. Let me ask you about Kathleen Sevilla. We labeled her the most powerful person in the world. She certainly spends more money than any other person in the world. She's got a trillion dollar budget. Right. And yet she's still in place despite the disaster of Obamacare. Can you explain to me why it is that President Obama keeps her in that position when she's been wildly unsuccessful? Well, it has been one of those issues that many of us have pushed back on, the, in the incompetence of several different things that have happened, whether it be the attack on the Catholic Church just two years ago and, and pushing she, back on that. Why, well, because in this, in this situation, she serves to the pleasure of the president. That means the president sees her as doing exactly what he wanted her to do. To replace her would be to put one person in that spot doing something the last person did. This is what the president wants. Now, he understands there are major mistakes that have been made, but if you just replace with another person, you aren't going to have that. But if he could push her out, and right. she would take the fall sure. for the disaster of Obama. And then yeah. someone would step in and have the exact same disaster, and it splashed even more on the president. The solution to that is not replacing her. The solution to that is removing power from that office, distributing that power back to the states like the health care compact, other things to be able to do. But you're not going to solve that just by replacing her. Uh, though we do not agree, but she absolutely represents the president's and his policies and his attitudes. You know, you've got a great voice for radio. Did you know that? I've heard that before, actually. Have you? I have. 
Uh, d d does your voice appear on your campaign ads? Uh, it, do it does, actually. I have a, a good voice for radio and a good face for radio as well to be able to uh, do stuff with it. So, yeah, do well. <laughs> Congressman James Langford, Republican, Oklahoma. Thanks for joining us, Good, sir. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. All right, breaking news.